annotations are a great way to draw your reader's attention to specific parts in your chart. And they can come in all kinds of shapes like rectangles, arrows or simply text labels. In ggplot you can create them using the annotate layer. And while this name is super obvious, you are tempted to ask why do we even need this layer? Why can't we just use gm text, gm rect or whatever else layer we want to use to create an annotation. In this video I'm going to show you how to use the annotate layer and show you also why we need them and cannot just use the other gm layers. Also before we dive into the video let me tell you that all of the code can be found in the blog post that we wrote for this video and you can find it by hopping into the description and finding the link down there. And with that let's hop into the screencast. All right I am here in our studio and I'm going to show you how to create the plot that we see here. So first up we load the tidyverse. I've already loaded it so this is why you won't get a notification here. And then we take a look at our penguins data set. And from this data set we start to build out our plot by sending it to ggplot and putting on the x-axis the bill length. So this column here. On the y-axis we'll have the flipper length and for the color we will use this species like we have done in this plot here. And then we simply throw this into a GM point layer and this already gives us a basic plot which we could improve by making the points a little bit larger and we could improve this a little bit further by changing the labels to something meaningful. So on the x-axis we'll have the bill length, on the y-axis we have the flipper length, then we know that the species label here should be spelled with a capital letter, just looks nicer and then of course we need to have a title. These were just some easy improvements. Now let's change the theme of this plot overall by adding a theme minimal layer where we have increased the base size so that the font will get larger and we can read things more easily. And we've seen in the previous plot that the legend was on top. We can do this change by putting another theme layer in there and setting the legend position to top. Now this is our basic scatter plot that we want to annotate. So I will save this into a variable and now we can get this scatter plot by simply recalling this variable here and we can apply all of our changes to this scatter plot. Now we did notice that we get a warning message whenever we plot this because in our data set, in the Parma Penguins data set, we know that there are a couple of missing values. Sometimes they are in the bill length column, sometimes they are in the flipper length column and therefore ggplot cannot plot this. And this is why we remove the missing values from our data set by applying a filter function which gets rid of all the observations which have a missing value inside of the sex column. And here this exclamation mark inverts it. So this will give us the data that has only all observations in there. Okay, so if we plot this, we won't get a warning message anymore. And with this, we can work nicely without seeing another warning message every time. Now let's add our first annotation by adding a text label. So we can do a new code chunk and in there we're going to put in scatter plot. And now we can add a gm text layer to this to generate a text. As I've said, we are going to do this both with annotate and the gm layers to understand what the difference between these two functions is and why we need the annotate layer instead of using these gms here. So what gm text needs is first the coordinates of the label that we want to include. So we want to have x and y coordinates. Notice that we do not have to throw this into an AES call like we did before because this right now doesn't depend on the data. We only want to add one single label so we can do without the AES. And of course if we want to have a label then we need to well specify what the text is. So we need to specify the labels here. And then we can apply a couple of tweaks like making the font bold and increasing the font size. Now this doesn't look at all what we want, so we need to fix that. First we notice that our legend gets all messed up and we can fix this by simply stating that this layer doesn't have to do anything with the legend. So let's simply state show legend is false. This will fix the legend, but still our label is colored and we don't want to have that. We only want to have a black label. So we can 
fix this by setting color to black. Now notice that this did the job, but our label looks a little bit weird as it's possibly hard to see on the recording. Maybe let me check if we can zoom in a little bit here. You will see, or maybe you don't see, but I will just tell you that this label is a little bit blurry and to see the difference, let's just redo this plot but with an annotate layer instead of a GM text layer. So we're basically taking the same code chunk, copy and pasting it, and then we can remove the GM text and make this into an annotate layer. And then we need to tell the annotate layer which GM we want to use. And here, this is just GM text and everything else basically stays the same except for this show legend part. By default, annotate will not interfere with the legend anyway, so we can simply remove that part and the rest stays the same. Basically, annotate needs the exact same information that GM text needs, but we use annotate instead of GM text. And if we execute this, we can see that the label changed a little bit and it became clearer, right? Let's compare again. So let me put in GM text version and then we use the annotate version here again. Notice how the label became much clearer. And this is our first example of how annotate is better at creating these annotations than GM text. And if you don't know yet what's going on here, let's do another example by throwing in a rectangular annotation to highlight a couple of points in our chart. And there we will see that the annotate layer is definitely better. And then I will explain more on why the annotate version looks better than the GM text version. So what we will do next is to take our plot from here, which has the blurry label, and we're going to add a rectangle to highlight a couple of points in this area here. And we're going to do this by using the GM rect function. And since we want to draw a single rectangle, we need to give the coordinates for each corner of the rectangle. So here we need X min, X max, Y min and Y max. And because we want to have this rectangle on top of the points, we need to make it a little bit transparent so that we can still see the points. So we're going to lower the alpha value to 0.5. And we're also going to make the fill color of this rectangle into gray 40 and the color into black. Okay, so what this should do is give us a rectangle that is somewhere between 40 and 47 on the X axis and between 210 and 200. 25 on the y axis so somewhere in here should be a rectangle and it should be gray with a black border and it should be a little bit transparent so that we can still see the points in here so let's have a look if this actually works and as you can see this didn't work well it did work we got a rectangle but we cannot see the points anymore so what we could do is maybe change the alpha value to make it more transparent but i lowered this to 0.25 now but this still didn't have any effect maybe do 0.1 still not transparent enough maybe let's go to something very low okay now we don't have any gray shading anymore here we can see the points a little bit but the points also look weird because they don't have the same color anymore as before so before i reveal what is going on here let's check if annotate can do a better job with this and we do that by once again taking this same stuff from before and putting this on top of our previous plot and then we replace the gm layer with an annotate layer and as the first argument we specify that we want to use a rectangular gm and now we can also put the alpha value back to 0.5 which is the original value we started out with in our previous example, but we lowered it because we couldn't see anything. Let's check if the annotation can work with just alpha 0.5. And indeed it does work. We can see here that the rectangle looks exactly like we want it to. It's a little bit transparent. It has a gray filling and it highlights the points in that rectangle quite nicely. So to recap, our plot with the annotate layers looks much nicer in the sense that the text is quite clear and not a bit blurry as before and also in our gm layers our plot with the gm layers we can barely see the points even though we have lowered the alpha value quite a lot compared to the annotate version which does the job just fine so the big question is what's going on here why is this annotate layer working but the gm layer isn't and this big reveal isn't as spectacular as you'd think you only have to remember one thing. 
and that is that in our plot in our scatter plot this is the regular scatter plot we have passed our data into ggplot this means that all of the next layers the gm point the gm text and the gm rec layers will all know the complete data set and this data set consists out of 333 rows so this means that all layers including our gm text and our gm rec expect that whatever we input here is of the length 333 and even if we only put in one coordinate this will be interpreted by gm text here in this example as meaning okay you probably want to have a text for all observations that we have in our data set and the same thing happens with gm rec ggplot will simply state okay you've specified specific coordinates that's cool so let me give you one rectangle for each of my 333 observations and in effect we have a blurry text because a lot of labels will be put on top of each other and they are not 100 percent in the exact same place so this is why it looks weird and the same thing happens with the rectangles even if we make them very transparent by lowering the alpha value we still have 333 rectangles on top of each other so we cannot see anything below this and in contrast what annotate does is exactly what we want we specified one set of coordinates for the text and one set of coordinates for the re rectangle and annotate will interpret this as well you gave me one thing so i will plot you one thing and this is what we need in this case so annotate breaks this paradigm of taking the whole data set that all the gm layers knows and simply said i don't care what the data is i will simply use what you give me in here and this is why you need annotate layers to create annotations and cannot just use gm rect or gm text or whatever you want and now that we know what's going on with the annotate layers we can finish our plot because i have promised you a plot that draws an arrow from the label to the rectangle to signal that well these are probably important penguins for whatever reason i just made something up here doesn't really matter what label you put in here i just wanted to demonstrate annotations so what we need for this arrow is to have another annotation that's clear by now i think and we need to use a curve annotation so this will basically use gm curve this is a similar like gm segment just with the difference that gm curves draws a curved line instead of a straight line between the points that we specify between x y and x and y and so these are the two points we need to specify and then we can draw a curve so let us specify these coordinates here i use these coordinates and i make the line with a little bit bigger and with that we have a curve that doesn't look nice yet we will fix that in a second but first let me point out that these coordinates are simply something i have chosen because i felt like the start and end point looks good this way you will simply have to play around with the coordinates until you're satisfied there is no magic trick to choose the coordinates nicely so that everything looks great from the start you choose some that you think are good and chances are that these coordinates are not great at all and then you tweak them until you are at a point where you say okay this looks nice let's use that and to fix our curve here let's change the curvature of this line we can simply choose a number between negative one and one here maybe negative two would also work it would make things more extreme so you can choose any number here larger numbers will lead to stronger curvatures and here i have chosen 0.5 and if you switch between plus or minus it flips the curvature okay so pretty clear i think and what is missing now is the actual arrowhead and we include this one by specifying the arrow argument from gm curve by using the arrow function and if we execute this we get an arrow immediately and we could tweak this arrow a little bit more by changing the length of the arrow to 0.5 centimeters makes it a little bit shorter and the arrow function could also change stuff like the angle to make this angle between these two lines of the arrowhead wider or narrower depending on how you like your arrow so yeah we've made it we have completely created our chart that we wanted to create by using annotate layers 
to add a text annotation, a rectangular annotation and a arrow annotation. And not only have we created a plot, we have also understood how to differentiate between annotate layers and GM layers. So now we know what the difference is and we won't run into trouble anymore by trying to throw in a rectangular annotation with GM rect and then adding 100 or 300 rectangles that make our chart less clear than before. So that was our tutorial for this week. Remember that you can find all of this information via the link in the description. And with that, thank you for watching and I will see you next time.